Okay, painters. Well, it looks like our fruit journey is just about to come to an end. Today's little video will finish up the red grapes, and then hopefully you'll be able to finish up all of your stems and your tendrils, and uh, we'll talk about these hard shadows here and there. So let's get started, and uh, we'll paint these red grapes. Prepped a few of the red grapes ahead of time so that I could show you the steps. We're going to be using a small oval blender, probably number two would be the very best. I'm going to start with raw sienna and with my red deep. So that, that red deep, or maybe it's called deep red, it's the red plus burnt umber mix. I'm starting with raw sienna. Um, I'm just going to very simply base some of this color in. And remember we're layering, so this first application is not going to look finished yet. And I've blot my brush. I'm going to pick up my red, deep red, place that right where I want it, blot my brush, then blend those two colors together. <clears throat> if I don't have the color exactly where I want it, or I don't have it moved around as much as I want it, all I have to do is just place some color back in and leave that alone. Okay, I'm going to do one more with that first coat. This is the um, I had a little too much on my brush. Well, yellow aqua, or excuse me, this is raw sienna. And just place that where I want it. You don't have to start with the raw sienna. You can start with the red if you want to. So as you go back from grape to grape, you can start with the raw sienna on one and start with the red deep on the next. It doesn't matter which color you start with as long as you put it in the place where you want it. So our first application will look just a little bit rough. I've got two grapes right here that have one application and they're dry. So now I'm going to do my second application. I'll pick up my raw sienna place that where I know I want it to be nice and strong and just blend that out a little bit blot my brush and pick up my red and just gently work the red into the raw sienna back to my raw sienna and just enough so that I can blend it a little bit better into the red. And that's two coats of color now. When that's dry, we want to start uh, increasing or going up in value. So now after I've got two coats of my red and raw sienna, I'm going to pick up a small round blender, a two probably, and some yellow oxide, and I'm going to do a dry stipple. So I'm going to find the place where I want to have the most light, and I'm going to stipple right into that area, and dry rub to blend. I'm also going to go back now and pick up a drop of water scoop a little bit of that yellow oxide on the tip of my brush and push it out here to the reflected light area. Okay, now I've done a couple of those in here and they're dry. So my next step after I put the yellow oxide in, in would be to go back to my dark red and now I'm going to do a dry rub. Not so much a stipple but more of a dry rub. And I'll come into whatever area I think I want to create more red on the grape. And let's remember these are red grapes, not yellow grapes. So don't be afraid to make them red. And just with, um, remember that you're going to stipple that paint into the brush and blot it so that you can do a dry rub. You've got the paint in the brush, not necessarily on the tip. Not a lot of paint on the tip of the brush. So now I'm just dry brushing to enhance and increase the red wherever I want it on the grapes. 
Now once I've done that, I want to go to a darker value. So I'm going to pick up my dark red and I'll add just a little bit more burnt umber to it. That's a, a naphthol red light and burned umber mix. And to make it just a little darker, I'm going to add a little more dark um, uh, burned umber to the dark. And I'm going to come into my very darkest areas and just kind of play around tapping and a little tiny bit of dry rubbing so that you have some areas that are pretty dark, especially those where the grapes are hidden underneath other grapes. And some of these grapes that are very hidden will want to be pretty dark. All right, now it's a matter of how many times do you want to repeat those steps. I'm going to go back to my red, just my red dark, a red deep. And I'm going to place that back where maybe I'm thinking, hmm, Maybe I could use a little better blend. Maybe I could use a little more red. I'm just going to dry rub until I get the red on there that I want. And now I'm back to my yellow oxide one more time. And I want to just stipple that in place and dry rub it. Now once all of this is dry, we're going to go lighter in value again. Now this grape right here, I don't know if you can see it, but I did go in and I stippled and dry rubbed when the red was still wet. So it got kind of hot right in there. I'll have to wait for that to dry completely and then I'll come back and stipple again to get rid of that hot pink color. But my next step on here is to mix the yellow oxide with some dirty white or warm white. Now it doesn't take very much white to bring this yellow to where you want it, so don't, um, don't add too much white to it. But you'll come into your light areas and stipple and dry rub. And stipple and dry rub. I'm going to pick up a drop of water, pick up my light yellow color, kind of calm that into my brush, flatten my brush on both sides so that it's a little bit calmed down. Now if you wanted to you could pick up a tiny bit of magic mix and I'm just going to rub that light value into this reflected light area and blend it. Now I will admit on these red grapes it does take a little bit of fussing around and you kind of have to put color on, go back to another color, come back again back and forth a couple of times until you get it the way you want it but you want to uh, just keep going lighter with yellow plus white and darker with red plus burnt umber so that eventually you have a lot of um, value changes there from very very dark to very light and don't be afraid to do these several times if you get to a place where it's looking a little bit too chalky and uh, not very smooth. You can always wash the grapes with red or you could wash them with raw sienna. I've stippled those up quite a bit again with yellow so I'm going to go back into my red now, load that into my brush for a dry rub and I'm just going to gently dry rub those again. Now after you do this about four times, four or five times, you'll start to think, okay, it's starting to look like a grape. It's not going to look like a grape any too soon. You have to work at it. And then I'm going to go to my straight white and I'm going to put on my, my sparkle light. So once you get those grapes up the color that you like and they look round because you have a nice shaded area and you have a nice highlight area and you have nice reflected light, then you can put your sparkle on there and you're done with your grapes. Sounds easy. Does take some time though, like I said, a lot of repetition. Now as far as the um, hard or the cast shadow on this piece, you could do very nicely not having that cast shadow. But if you want to put the cast shadow in, this is the way you do it. I'm going to use my liner brush with some water 
and some raw umber. And I'm going to thin that raw umber down quite a bit with water. And I have to imagine, if the light is hitting on this apple right here, that this apple will probably cast a shadow in about this shape. And I'm going to just draw a line there to show the shape and the size that I want. And then I'm going to gently come back and whisk the paint in there to fill it in. We want to have a hard line there, not like a floated line or a blended line, but it's a hard line that the, the apple is casting because of the light source. Um, you can look at your photographs and you'll see where the shadows are. There's a shadow here from the plum. Draw your line in first to indicate how big and the shape of your shadow and then just gently paint a wash in to fill it in. So you'll be able to check your photos, see where to put those, finish up your vines and all of your branches, and then you'll be all finished. Here you can see some of the uh, shadows that are in there. There are some shadows um, that are being shown by the grapes, the plums, there's a leaf shadow here on the bowl. The pear even has a little bit of a shadow. A lot of these grapes have hard shadows. I've hope, I hope you've enjoyed painting the fruit with me. I hope you learned a little something that you can use in all of your paintings. And I hope you'll paint again with me sometime. Until we meet in a class somewhere, paint happy!